Welcome back everyone. You are watching Law and Crime. I am Terry Austin and we are going to run down the most memorable cases from 2019. And right now we are going to see the Claudia Horrick case where she shot and killed her husband who was a lieutenant in the Air Force. First, we're going to start with the prosecution's opening statement. Let's take a look. The prosecution there is giving an opening statement and it sounds horrible. We know that juries are supposed to wait until all the evidence is in. But Joseph, listening to this opening statement about hollow bullets, about how she plotted to kill her husband who is serving in the Air Force and is a hero in that regard, what are you thinking and what do you think the jury is thinking at this point? Uh, well, I have to tell you, you heard me laugh a little bit. I, I have to wonder what the jury is thinking after he made that comment that it was objected to where uh, she stated that uh, he said that she was married previously and she didn't kill that husband. So, you know, that gives you an idea of which direction this case is going to go. It's very contentious throughout. She was a, a difficult, uh, a difficult person to defend, I think. Um, and what we will see laid out before us is how, in fact, how, in fact, um, the importance of preservation of evidence and the tenacity of investigators and a family are key to this, because this took a long time, Terry, to finally make it into the light of the day. There's a lot of people probably in that area that had forgotten about this case, but let's keep in mind, his body, the major's body, was actually found in 2007. And, you know, I don't know about you, I, I can hardly remember what happened in 2007, and moving forward, this is 2019, that's when this case was finally prosecuted. So that gives us an idea as to what we're looking at going forward in this case. Well, that's exactly right. And I had another question for you regarding when the prosecution said that, and, and we both sort of chuckled. It's something that he was being facetious about, saying, well, she didn't kill her other husband. But actually, I was thinking the objection was probably you know, not well played because as a defense, I would actually use that argument and say, look, she's been divorced before and she didn't kill that husband. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that you can you can flip that logic on its ear. Uh, and again, you know, uh, you know, being a non-attorney, you guys fascinate me because I see these mental gymnastics that you guys have to uh, deal with within the constraints and uh, the rules of the court. And you have to be very quick-witted to pick up on something like that. And, of course, esteemed counsel here, Terry, of course you are. And you picked up on that. I, I certainly didn't. But, yeah, it could be flipped. And you could, you know, um, they could easily say, well, she didn't kill her first husband, just as counsel has already stated. So why do you think, after all this time, prosecution would want to move forward with this case? I think that it's because they're at the end of their rope. They could have... Uh, you know, probably uh, uh, probe that a little bit, but uh, needless to say, it's going to be interesting to see what the defense has to say coming up. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. Obviously, you're well-versed in this as well. Let's take a look at what the defense had to say in their opening statement. Well, Joseph, that was a very interesting opening statement from the defense attorney. It doesn't seem as though he is arguing anything about the fact that she did or did not kill him. It's clear she did kill her husband. She tried to kill herself, but maybe he's saying that the whole thing wasn't premeditated. She didn't have bullets in the gun to kill herself. Maybe she was gonna commit suicide. What are you taking away from this whole defense strategy? The old, I ran out of ammunition defense. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, yeah, I think that what we're gonna find out is that she did go and visit uh, visit the gun store and literally uh, chose one of the most powerful handguns that uh, that she could purchase. And she wanted this. She wanted something that would be highly effective. She knew what she was doing. Uh, what, what's really fascinating to me, and I still had a hard time trying to understand this, I covered this trial, I think it was with Jesse, during, during this period of time, several mornings. And it was during that period of time that they were talking about this suicide box, this contraption that was allegedly utilized in order to facilitate suicide and all this sort of thing. I still couldn't make heads or tails of it. And I think that it wound up confusing the jury to a certain extent. I was certainly uh, certainly confused. And 
Um, I've got a background in forensics, and I understand a few things about firearms. Uh, and it, it just left me scratching my head. Um, and, and I think to top things off, uh, you know, uh, defense chose to throw in that statement. She even used, and I think this is kind of cold, uh, she even used her husband's privileges uh, to escape the country, uh, his Southwest privileges as a pilot and as a family member. So that was kind of interesting. You talked about something that the defense could have used earlier, the prosecution had stated. I think the prosecution could probably use that, uh, at, you know, in, in uh, moving forward with the case. But let's see where this goes. Yeah, let's see exactly where this goes. And before we do that, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk all about this crazy case where we have Claudia Herrick killing and shooting her husband, who was a major in the Air Force. We'll be right back. <laughs> 